the links to join the channel or check out the subscribe star or possibly locals that might get on there too I, I, if they host videos i presume that could be useful so what happened and where we are in today's version of clown world so wizard of oz remake with blt representation as a part of the story that reflects the world fabulous kind of reminds me of the 80s 90s when they uh, were talking about rap music and people were pointing out just the horrific levels of ultra violence in the music and they're going oh well it you know uh, reflects the culture or reflects the i guess the life whatever you know i kind of wondered about that uh, it seemed like um tail wagging the dog or these these you know the witches around the the cauldron uh, muttering their incantation incantations to create craft some some evil i couldn't help but think like yeah maybe you got that backwards you're you're creating the culture by uh, crafting these songs of just the most horrific ultra violence. I, I, you know, I wonder if you wrote something different, you wouldn't change the culture around that. But you know, there's money to be made, and there were other forces at work uh, behind the rap game in the early '90s, late '80s, when all of a sudden they discovered that gangster rap could be very profitable and also perhaps achieve other goals of these uh, Machiavellian Machiavators. So Hollywood crafts a society by manipulating the media. Media creates a society, but it also kind of, um, it kind of goes back and forth. So if you control the media, you end up controlling the narrative, and you can use this incremental generational brainwashing to achieve some pretty horrific goals if you look around this current Weimar. Um, and you can craft the narrative to say anything you want to slowly slowly uh boil the frog and get people to accept the most horrific things again again 2022 current year we live in a society look around you at what we've just passively accepted like well what you gonna do if you speak out you'll get doxxed and fired yeah that's the, that's the brutal truth you just like all this stuff just gets repressed until um until hope until perhaps it it um People seek redress of grievance. So uh, what's the result when the people who make movies are so much further left, I'm not even sure left is the right word anymore, than the the general public? Well, they keep shifting this acceptable, you know, the, the window left of, of what people will just kind of shrug their shoulders over, where a few decades ago that, you know, they would have got up in arms and um, pitchforks and torches sort of things. So it's... um. It's it's you know it's weird how there's really no such uh, no way to kind of rebut this. There's no counter to this this Hollywood version of uh, filth and degeneracy. At least not up until recently. Things are are changing a little bit because there is a white pill of alternative social media and then alternative financial services. Gab pay, give and go, crypto, and and other of those kind of financial services and ways to work around. Like we're, if you're on the right, if you're a libertarian, liberal, you're really going to be into free speech and decentralized, uh, massive parallel structures of communication because you don't like, why would you want censorship? Why would you want choke points? And if you're the authoritarian, usually the authoritarian left is the ones pulling the strings. Now they're very much into centralized authority because they know it's easier to subvert and corrupt to have a, like a, a ministry uh, of truth to um, censor at one point than to set, to have all these massive little workarounds. There's a there's some some Bill Gates and a bunch of other people were I don't know the European Union were given some speech and they were very concerned because they needed the they needed to be able to censor all these websites that were popping up and all these social media platforms and you know, people in the audience were I'm like listening thinking wait a minute who are you to tell other adults what ideas they can contemplate and in, in Europe um, well they have the right to uh, you know they, they never thought they needed a, a piece of paper a bill of rights that said speech was important free expression needed to be protected and as a consequence it's like if you're in europe and you want to access some websites or, you know just the most normie of websites and channels you're going to need a vpn or a tor or something like that some kind of workaround because they've uh, they've acquiesced to allow the government to censor what ideas they may consume it's like well that, that 
doesn't it seems like it seems like it's just top down a dictatorship instead of a, a republic of the people but that's why they that's why they keep using that word democracy like i don't think that word is is that word even in the constitution I, it's a republic gentlemen if you could keep it looks around 2022 realize oh i guess we didn't keep it anyway so um we uh we have these tools in place now you know odyssey bit shoot all these other and shing just popped up too the shing works great it's a live streaming platform where we can slowly start to counter their narrative in a way that just wasn't possible 20 years ago maybe even 10 years ago i mean things are things are exciting though if you're if you're involved in this any aspect of the culture war and you're not on the side of these filthy globalists then yeah things are kind of things are kind of moving along quite nicely um and then people are supporting it i mean i people are you know i'm on subscribe star and and there's like there's a bunch of other people who are doing this kind of stuff and like yeah there's no advertisements for the you know for the odyssey bitchy type of channels it's like it's all it's all supported by just like the same crowd of people um and the sports out there it's it's kind of an exciting time to to be in it feels like a little bit of a precursor to a i don't know revolution or something a peaceful constitutionally protected one of course anyway so now we have the opportunity to um, to turn a what was a monologue into a dialogue in a little little ways and um organize for you know a peaceful uh, expression of different opinions somehow i don't think they value diversity of thought it's diversity of approved thought and, and even then, it's very tightly. Literally, uh, they floated that idea a year ago of a, a minister of truth. I forget that girl's name. Um, in America, to counter disinformation and misinformation, <laughs> like, so why why would one central authority decide what is misinformation when we the people can decide for ourselves? Let the uh, open marketplace of ideas, sunlight, be the best disinfectant. It's like, no, no, we need to we need to we need to decide what's true. It's like, but doesn't the government have a history of lying to us? Yes, that's true. But if we can control the narrative, we can just erase that history, and that's that's literally what's going to happen. So, um, what if we move the window to the right a little bit? You know, started uh, started crafting our own narrative because it's not really just live and let live with Hollywood. You can't just silently not watch some show. You really have to take part in this this cultural um, battle of ideas to speak out against these Marxist parasites. We we live in a society, all it's we're swimming in this ocean of filth. Like you just can't you can't allow it um, t to take place without without some pushback. All this Marxism creates a society that gets to the point of, well, what you see around you today in 2020, I never thought I would live to see this, where you've got kids dancing around on stage um, and giving hormones, thanks, Kiva Pharmaceuticals, um, to, to kids. And, you know, other other things, other things that kind of um, uh, take, stopping them from, uh, you know, being fruitful and multiplying. When they're under the age of 18, they can't even consent because children can't consent it's like oh yeah this is where we are as a society i think matt walsh did a video on it matt walsh project veritas lives with tiktok they all cover that kind of issue and you know if you if you talk about it too much you, you just get shadow banned and then eventually kicked off so all this kind of stuff has to be destroyed because you know this just gets worse until what actual sacrifices to moloch i mean if you destroy someone's ability to reproduce well that's a that is a sacrifice to um to a lower power and because i mean like yes you could delete someone or you could also just sterilize someone it's like ultimately the effect is the same so on the creative side isn't anyone curious why they don't just create their own stories are they really nothing more than culture vultures cultural parasites yeah they really cannot create as as tolkien said well they they can't create anything that people want so they have to do this thing with the bait and switch uh, where you know they have a known property with a not necessarily built-in fan base but name recognition stuff that came out this 1930s but a lot of stuff that came out in the 80s um is ripe for remaking and, and, and nobody ever looks because usually it's it's remade for a narrative. It's not. It's like they're not improving it. They're not covering a song to improve it. They're covering it and changing the lyrics. It's like, well, what's the point? Uh, because we know that you recognize the beat of the song, so now we're going to insert... Like, yeah, but this is just propaganda. Yes, that's right. Um, so people don't want woke original stories because they're just this cringy globalist nonsense. So they take a name that you know, and then they, they ruin it with their own woke silliness.
if you don't like something or you want to change it, you really have to speak up against these, this Bolshevik cancer, which drives them crazy. If you simply put LOL after some race swapped in some, some Disney story, they will lose their mind. Uh, that Star Wars girl did that. She put LOL after. I don't even remember what it was. Maybe The Little Mermaid. I, I don't know. Or maybe James Bond or something. Um, she, they literally got threats of deletion. Um, the stuff, and I think I did a video on that last week or something, but um, all the, and I archived all those tweets. There's, I archived like 50 of those things. The stuff that people will say simply because you didn't, you put LOL after something, like literally threats against you, your family, just the sickest, sickest, most twisted things. It's like, yeah, Twitter's this far left wing echo chamber where it's, you know, the narrative goes one way. Some things, you know, it's like some things are acceptable, other things aren't. They, someone did a study, it's like all the hate speech, like 90% plus of the hate speech is coming from uh, pox to the uh, people of the light. And you go, oh, so you can start like enforcing the rules? No, because the rules don't go two ways. Um, they don't, they don't hate hate speech, they don't hate isthophobicism. They just hate you, so they craft the rules so it only applies to pro to uh, prohibit your free expression, but not not the people who hate you. So you gotta laugh at these uh, these commie cringe farmers. You know, parody lampoon; those are very powerful uh, tools because uh, if you don't, they just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. So there's, you, they've, you've got to take part in this uh, this battle of ideas. They say they want them, and for this, they want more BLT representation in films. Well, my diversity of thought opinion is that I, I want I want less. If that's a take that as a hypothetical, but if you express that on social media or Twitter, well, your account is just going to get mass reported. You'll get shadow banned, and then you'll just get kicked off. So my uh, my my vibrant, diverse anti BLT opinion doesn't get expressed in the marketplace. Of ideas that's it's why it's very much a far left-wing echo chamber so the social media narrative is that people support this BLT this you know cultural Marxist films and comics um, they built this false echo chamber by design that's inherent in the system of social media if you're not a globalist well you'll get shadow banned and then you'll just get suspended if, if my opinion was that I, I wanted all straight blonde whatever in some movie um, and that was my preference, and I wanted to have a, a Twitter club for that or a, a group for that kind of thing. It's like, well, it just wouldn't be allowed on social media. You just get mass reported. And Twitter doesn't really investigate it. They just kind of, if you have, if you don't have a huge channel, you're just going to get shadow banned and then kicked off. I mean, people saw what happened when Elon Musk was was in talks to buy it. I got back on Twitter for that, and every every right of center libertarian account or anyone who went against the narrative, all of our accounts blew up. Which is like there was a three-day period of just all these right-wing accounts suddenly got all these followers because they were no longer shadow banned, and then and then Twitter started cracking down again, which um, you know would have been cool if he bought that. I don't know where those negotiations are. So if they want to reflect this new world order, why not just create something new? Simply write your own story. The Wizard of Oz reflected the 1930s, but. Because uh, fair Europeans, I assume, probably created the story. I don't remember. Uh, uh, Wizard of Oz. Yeah, who was that guy? Frank Baum, I think, wrote it. I don't know who wrote it. Um, the view is someone fair. Someone fair-skinned and probably light-eyed. The view is that it's acceptable to subvert and destroy it. And it only goes in some direction. If 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 a non you know fair skinned person wrote some story and um, Hollywood decided to remake it, well they just wouldn't because I mean Hollywood's the same globalists that are on Twitter. But that's my point is um, when you talk about like uh, people get on Twitter and go yeah yeah we don't want to see you race swap these European characters, and then you say oh yeah you should race swap these African characters. They lose their mind because in their mind they don't they, they dehumanize the European characters and European people. They don't see them as having valuable stories or being valuable having value to the stories which is funny because they created the stories that the, um, they're trying to subvert now they literally you know the Englishman or the whoever Hans Christian Anderson wrote these stories uh, even Walt Disney you know created this stuff and they're being swapped out of their own stories out of their own history because people on Twitter they've been conditioned to just not value not not see European people as as human not see them as, as valid we go yeah you should swap out you know Black Panther or something for you know the, that Stanley and, and Jack Kirby created right yeah, you should swap them out. They go, no, no, no. Being being uh, being uh, dark countenanced is is important to his story. So yeah, being European is important to these other stories also. They're equally valid.
but they literally don't see that. Like this isn't the left wing isn't about not being istophobic. Uh, they're just they're just manipulating that until they can move the goal, goalposts and they say no no no. But you actually can't be istophobic against European people. It's like well obviously you can because that's what the word means. But if you I mean if you control if you control you know these these alphabet uh, social control groups. Then you control the narrative. You can just pressure a dictionary to define woman as not man and man as not woman. It's like, yeah, those those aren't those words don't mean anything. You just like it's you're not a valid dictionary. You're not a valid definition if you can change it overnight. Things have to evolve organically. So eventually, you come to this Tower of Babel realization where both sides realize, yeah, we literally have different uh, understandings of the terms of of language. So like when I use you know the term istophobicism, like I'm using it. Um, as as it was defined, and, and cultural Marxists are subverting it and changing it to something else because they feel it's different. I mean, they never you never stop to consider like, oh yes, but we feel it's different also. And then like it's an, it's not an argument based on logic. You can't win that. It's it's appeal to emotion. I feel because of these reasons. Um, this word only includes these people. And then you raise your hand and go, yes, but I feel the opposite. And you know they lose their freaking minds. But and they go, well, well show them, back it back it up with logic. I don't have to refute an emotional appeal with a logical one. I can just simply refute with an emotional one. They're both worthless arguments. They're just your feelings. But, I mean, we're not getting enough of this frank discussion. And obviously there's more I could say, but not on not on YouTube, because you just get kicked off the platforms. You, like, YouTube has kicked off thousands of channels since since um, uh, 2016. Channel Any channel that, that helped move, craft things in that direction... Um, there are thousands of those channels were kicked off like a hundred big big well-known channels you know in the probably the six figures but then there are thousands of other smaller channels um, that it got demonetized and then shadow banned and then finally got kicked off it's like they were a part of the narrative but you look at YouTube and YouTube's you know it's got to be the number one video hosting platform I, I assume but it's 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 like completely a left-wing echo chamber because all those guys they, they saw that trump got elected and like yeah we can't let this happen again so they kicked off all those channels you know jones is one of them but there's a ton more that all got kicked off you probably weren't even watching them they're all you know odyssey bid shoot private websites now but it's like the power to control the narrative is so insane i know it's like politics and this is wizard of oz it's, a, it's just pop culture but it's really not it's all connected that's why people don't go, why do you still make YouTube videos? It's not like it's not worth a dollar a day from YouTube. Because I think it's an important part. I think this is one facet of the culture war pop, the how it's expressed in pop culture. And you know, talking to a YouTube audience is different because you're not preaching to the choir like you are on Odyssey, Bitch You, Gap TV, World Two Video, and other those other unmentionable um, websites that are are wrong think websites. Anyway, check me out, subscribe star, and I will see you guys all next episode.